This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. It is the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of the new liturgical year. And Advent is the beginning, well, or is the season where we prepare for the nativity of our blessed Lord. And as many have of the greatest minds in the church in the past have pointed out, this is a great time for us to be reflecting on the four last things and for us to be reflecting on the mission and the sorrows and the passion of our Lord in his earthly life. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. I don't think I've ever brought the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas to this channel before, but I have found his, uh, his sermons for Advent. And I'm thinking this year, maybe it'll be St. Thomas that I cover. I believe last year or the year before I did uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori on, for his Advent reflections. And so today we're going to start with St. Thomas Aquinas. And here is his first sermon for Advent. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek. It's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verse 5. This is a prophecy of the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ, about which there are three signs. First, the dignity of him who is coming. Secondly, the utility of his advent. Thirdly, the manner in which he came. Of the first sign we read in the Gospel, Thy king cometh, a merciful king, a just king, a wise king, a terrible king, an omnipotent king, an eternal king, a merciful king in sparing, a just in judging, a good in rewarding, a wise in governing, an omnipotent king in defending the good, a terrible king in punishing the evil, an eternal king in ruling eternally and bestowing immortality. Of the first, Isaiah in chapter 16 verse 5 says, And in mercy shall the throne be established. On the second, Isaiah chapter 34 says, And behold, a king shall reign in justice. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 5 says, And he shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David. On the third, this Psalm 63 says, Truly God is good to Israel, even to t such as are of clean heart. On the fourth, the prophet Jeremiah states, I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute justice and judgment in the earth. Of the fifth, Esther says, Lord, 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 the King Almighty, for the whole world is in thy power. On the sixth, wisdom says, As a severe king thou didst condemn and punish. On the seventh, the prophet Jeremiah says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. And St. Luke says, And of his kingdom there shall be no end. On the seventh, collectively, Maccabee states, O Lord, Lord God, creator of all things, who art fearful and strong and righteous and merciful, and the only gracious king, wisdom in the creator, mercy in the pitiful, goodness in the good, justice in the just, severity in the terrible, power in the powerful, eternity in the eternal. This is the king who cometh to thee for thy prophet. Here the use of Advent is noted, for it was sevenfold as applied for the present time. First for the illumination of the world, second for the spoliation of Hades, third for the reparation of heaven, fourth for the destruction of sin, fifth for the vanquishment of the devil, sixth for the reconciliation of man with God, and seventh for the beatification of man. Of the first, John says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John further says, This was the true light which liveth, lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Of the second, Hosea states, O death, I will be thy plague. Grave, I will be thy destruction. Zechariah states, As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. Of the third, Ephesians states that in the dispensation of the fullness of times might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Of the fourth, the letter to the Hebrews states that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Of the fifth, Romans states, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Of the sixth, Romans states, For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled shall we be saved by his life. Of the seventh, John says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
It was because the Holy Fathers saw the good things which were about to happen at his advent that they were calling with so great a desire. O thou wouldst rend the heavens and come down. Concerning these seven things, the prophet spake, Isaiah, saying, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He hath anointed me to preach good things. Behold the illumination of the world, for by preaching he hath enlightened the world for us, to bind up the brokenhearted, destroying sin, and sin being destroyed, makes a broken heart to be healed. To proclaim liberty to the captives, behold the spoilation of Hades, for by spoiling Hades, Hades he led captivity captive. The opening of the prison, behold the restoration of heaven, which is the opening of heaven. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, behold the reconciliation of man with God. The day of vengeance of our God is the day of the destruction of the devil. For so he visited with vengeance for all the injuries which the devil had done to the saints. To comfort all that mourn, behold the beatification of men. In this verse is noted the manner of his coming, meek, in meekness of our Lord Jesus Christ wished to come, and he wished to come meekly for four reasons. In the first place, that he might the more easily correct the wicked. Psalm 89, chapter 10 says, For mildness is come upon us, and we shall be corrected. In the second place, that he might show to all his holiness. Ecclesiastes states, My son, do thy work in meekness, and thou shalt be beloved above the glory of men. In the third place, that he might draw the sheep to himself, that he might multiply to himself a people. Samuel says, And thy gentleness hath made me great. St. Bernard says, We wholly run after thee, O good Jesus, on account of thy meekness. In the fourth place, that he might teach meekness. Matthew says, Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. There are four things which ought especially to commend meekness to us. The first, because it delivers us from evil. The second, because it perfects grace. The third, because it preserves the soul. And the fourth, because it deserves the land of the living. Of the first, it delivers from evil, because ju judicious meekness belongs to him who feels with no bitterness of mind. Of the second, Proverbs states, he giveth grace unto the lowly. Of the third, Ecclesiasticus states, keep thy soul in meekness. Of the fourth, St. Matthew states, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Let us therefore ask th that this Lord, the King, may come to us. We shouldn't be surprised that St. Thomas roots everything he says there in Scripture. There's only one or two references to the saints from after the time of our Lord. But he does paint a pretty clear picture that our Lord had a purpose. He came to, he came meekly to the earth, incarnated meekly, so that he could exact justice and so that he could redeem souls. Justice being, of course, expelling of the devil, essentially, and punishing the devil and freeing those who have been in the servitude of evil by offering them the way of salvation and the way of grace. St. Thomas says it better than I ever could, but he's a doctor of the church, so take that to mean what you will. I'm curious what you think of this. Um, the, his sermons are fairly short which is, in some cases, a breath of fresh air. It honestly is. He just gets right to the point and tells you what he thinks. <laughs> Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. And hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So to share this on social media, that helps as well. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.